understanding, what an idea, what a concept. Is that uh, something all of you understand what you're doing when you come to church? In the Bible, it's one of the major topics in Scripture. My uh, Bible program puts out a little chart of where the word understand comes from in Scripture. So you see, you know, in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, there's not an awful lot. When you get to Job here, Job had quite a bit of struggle with understanding what was happening to him. The all-time favorite in Scripture is Proverbs, talking about understanding. Isaiah has quite a bit. Daniel, Matthew, Mark has got the most in the Gospels, and 1 Corinthians. And, of course, down here in Revelation, there's quite a bit about understanding. Well, Peter, he had a struggle with understanding. John chapter 13 says, Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave the world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. What a thought. Jesus knew his disciples. He loved them. He cared about them. It was time for supper. The devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon uh, Iscariot, to betray Jesus. <coughs> Jesus knew everything that the Father had given him, knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, poured water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. Then we have the conflict. Jesus says to Simon Peter, when Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And that's when Jesus said, Peter, you just don't understand yet. And you think, well, Jesus is kind of putting Peter down. He doesn't get it. Well, that's true, he doesn't. But you know, I see this as a promise. You don't understand now, but someday you will understand. That's something we all need to really think about. Maybe we don't get it all. Maybe we don't understand it all. There's lots of places in scriptures I still wonder about. But yet, the promise is there. Someday you will understand. Someday you will get it. It's going to make sense. My daughter and I have put together a number of pieces of furniture together. We go to Ikea and purchase something, and then, then the fun begins. <laughs> Pull out the directions, and we... Sometimes you say, well, what does this part do? What is that? How in the world does this go together? And we read the instructions, and finally it starts to make sense. Then we understand, then we put it together, and then we've got a good piece of furniture. Peter had been with Jesus for three years. He didn't understand. Well, why didn't he understand? Was Jesus not speaking clearly enough? Was there some communication problem? Didn't they speak the same language? Why in the world, after three full years, he still didn't understand. Well, was it Jesus' fault? Jesus just wasn't speaking clearly? Jesus uh, didn't know how to give the message? No, I don't think any of that was true. I think it was about Peter, wasn't it? Peter was thinking other thoughts. And you know, God doesn't make everything very, very clear to us because God can't talk in our language, right? Or, is it maybe we're the ones who are kind of slow in figuring out, we assume this or we assume that, and, and maybe we need to read his words again and again. You know, Job, I'm reading Job right now in my reading through the scripture every year. I've got a head start this year. Since I finished early last year, I started in December. So, reading it through. So, I'm in, into Job. I'm already a month ahead of schedule. Sometimes you sit down and it just flows and you go on and on. Well, Job, he's, he doesn't understand. This happened to him. 
his buddies, his friends come and they try to understand and they think they do, but they don't. They don't know it all. And finally you get to the end of the book of Job and, and Jesus has 40 questions for them. And more. And they finally realize, I was on the wrong track the whole time. I really didn't understand. Job knew he didn't understand. His, his friends thought they did. And so who did God praise at the end? His friends, who thought they understood, or Job, who knew he didn't understand? Well, it was Job, he knew he didn't understand. Now, Job learned a lot from God's questions and God's comments at the very end. And it revealed something about God. He wants us to understand, but he also waits until we're ready to understand. He leads us to that point where we finally can get it. He's been clear all along. We're the ones who need to clean out our ears, need to clean out our eyes, get better glasses, something, so we can see His Word. Remember the story of those uh, two fellows on the way to Emmaus? Let me get to that story. I got it toward the end, but I want to I talk about it now. Same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus. These good guys, oh yeah, they're followers of Jesus. They know where to go. They know what to do. They were following Jesus. They were listening to his words. And they were traveling. It was seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. Can you imagine, were they excited or depressed? Well, the story seems that they were quite depressed. As they talked, discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? Was it important? Was it casual conversation? Evidently not. It was intense conversation. They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Big clue. They were happy about what they were talking about. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard all the things that have happened in the last few days. What? Don't you know? What things, Jesus asked? The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth. He was a prophet who did wonder, powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests, other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped. What does that mean? Does that mean we still have our hope? No. We had hope. Our hope is now finished. It's now done. We don't have any hope anymore. We had hope. He was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. So now they're really in the dumps. But now, something strange has happened. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them, Jesus is alive. Do they have hope again? Doesn't seem to be. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, the body was gone, just as the woman had said. All they have is a missing body. Do they have hope that he is alive? They don't seem to trust the women, do they? <laughs> then Jesus said to them, You foolish people. <laughs> Frustration in Jesus' part. You foolish people. You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in scriptures. What were they needing? They were needing to understand scriptures. They were needing to go back and reread scripture again. Reread it in new light. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? 
clearly predicted. The scripture was clear the whole time. Who was having the trouble understanding? Yes, you will understand someday when events make it clear to you. So the scriptures are clear, there's nothing wrong with that. The prophets are clear, there's nothing wrong with them. God is clear, there's nothing wrong with him. Where's the trouble lie? We get our assumptions, we get our imaginations, we get ourselves all worked up over things that we hope might happen, and we don't understand clearly. By this time, excuse me, skip the most important one, then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. All of scriptures. He didn't say, well, now this is the new idea. This is a new theory. This is, this, all the scriptures, they weren't quite correct, but let me show you a new way. No, he took them back to the scriptures again. Scriptures have always been correct. They just need to look at it with new eyes. They needed to hear with new ears so that they could understand what scriptures was all about. Well, Peter, he was in the same pro problem. He didn't understand this. Jesus washing his feet? Peter, you don't get it now. But you will someday. You will understand what this is all about. Did he? Oh, yes, he did. They said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the way and explained the scriptures to us? That was quite a nice burning. It wasn't heartburn. Oh, yes, it was heartburn, but in a different sense, wasn't it? Their hearts were burning with that kind of, oh, I get it now. It all makes sense. The light bulb has turned on, and now it's very, very clear. What, does that story end there? No. They run back the seven miles to Jerusalem because they have a message to tell. Just as they were telling the message, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them and says, Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled, frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened? He asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Here's another clue. Why didn't people understand? Doubt. What keeps us from believing? Doubt. This week I had opportunity to talk to uh, two, talk to a number of people, but two ladies especially. Both of them were former Adventists. One considered herself still an Adventist, but she's really a former Adventist. The one was uh, very bitter. She was raised in Adventist. She had been a youth leader. This was long, far away, and a long time ago. She told me about her experiences in the church, and now she gave it all up because it didn't go along with what she wanted to believe. Sound familiar? People have this idea of what they think ought to happen, and Scripture is very clear, but it doesn't go along with their own ideas. And so she kind of made up her own thing, and now she's bitter. But instead of sending me out of the room, she wanted to continue to talk. I think she really wanted to talk. And so we prayed together that she would see Scripture fresh, with new eyes and new ears. It's what she needed to do. Other lady, well... She had requested Bible studies. So I went, gave her Bible studies, and as we were talking, we found out her story, too. And even though she had been a member, she had been kind of distracted. Distracted by conspiracy theories. Distracted by all kinds of other ideas. Instead of studying Scripture and believing what Scripture had to say, she was kind of caught off on last day event conspiracies. Man's going to do this. Governments are going to do this. 
money is going to be this way, and oh, what am I going to do? She was afraid. She was frightened. She was scared. She didn't know just what to do, and what she wanted me to tell her was where to invest money, where to take care of uh, this problem or that problem. It's not what it's all about, is it? Perfect love casts out fear. all fear. So just saying that she was afraid and admitting it was saying that she didn't trust God. That's why she. That's why I say she's really not an Adventist because Adventists trust God, right? Right? <laughs> well, we know we should, but sometimes we too have our doubts because we aren't understanding Scripture. But the good news is, someday we will. Someday we will understand Scripture. The good news is, the one lady wanted to try. She wanted more studies about Jesus. She wanted the opportunity to remove all those fears. And I think someday, if she'll listen, she will. The other lady, no, she was content with her bitterness. What a sad state of affairs. In Mark, Mark says more about understanding than any of the others. It says, to those who listen, more understanding will be given. What? We can have understanding just as the promise gives. To those who listen, more understanding would be given. And Jesus will present the information as much as they could understand. You know those parables that Jesus told? He told them simply. He told them very clearly with things that they understood so that they will understand the bigger message. As much as they could understand. He also tells them, as you listen, try to understand. Try to get it. It's not just, here it is, here's this scientific analysis. Either take it or leave it. No. Put your heart into it. And how did that expression go? Put your pickle popcorn to work? <laughs> Enthusiastically try to understand because that's where the faith gets built. That's where the hope comes in. Jesus asked several times to his disciples and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, don't you understand? It was frustrating to Jesus. He was talking as clearly as he could, and yet they didn't get it. They didn't understand because their minds were elsewhere. I taught for a couple of years English. And I was trying to not dwell on the meaning of the word so much, but as the pronunciation. And I had different tools to get Japanese people how to pronounce so they didn't have a strong Japanese accent. It was more like English so it could be understood. Don't you get it? You know, you got to put your mouth in just a certain way and it sounds like English. And if you don't, it sounds like Japanese squish. <laughs> it doesn't sound very good and it's hard to understand. Well, we worked on that. In uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 32, the disciples didn't understand. And there was another telling thing that Jesus said. And they were afraid to ask. Now that's pretty sad, isn't it? Afraid to ask what they were afraid of. Because all of us, <clears throat> me too, are afraid to ask because we will afraid of sounding foolish. Afraid of sounding that maybe we're not as smart as we think we are. And so we're afraid to ask. And who were they afraid to ask? Jesus, who's the most understanding and patient of anyone out there, and yet they're afraid of that because their ego was more important than understanding. What a sad commentary on them and us. <coughs> Jesus said that they would understand in John 8, 28. 
They will understand when you see the Son of Man lifted up. Then it all made sense. Peter hadn't seen the Son of Man lifted up yet. He was still the day before. And so he didn't understand. But when he saw the Son of Man lifted up, did he get it then? No. No, he didn't. He was one of those who were there in that upper room and didn't understand and was afraid, thinking that Jesus was a ghost. But then Jesus went over the scriptures with them. Just like Cleophas and his buddy on the way to Emmaus, Jesus went over scriptures with the disciples. And then they understood. They needed to hear it again after seeing Christ lifted up on the cross. Then it all made sense. <clears throat> Someday, Peter, you will understand. And each of us, someday, will understand. Well, we're going to go through the service of humility. Take the bread, take the juice. It's all ceremony. It all has significant meaning. And some of us may not really quite get it all yet. But someday, we will understand. And there's so much in Scripture that we read and, and we understand more and more each time we go through it. But the promise is still there. Someday we will understand the whole portion of it. Sometimes we have Sabbath school discussions. We don't quite understand this. We don't understand that. Does that mean we should drop out? Does that mean we need to give it up or maybe it's find another church who takes it more clearly? No, not at all. The promise is still there. Someday, we will understand. Someday, it will burn in our hearts as the recognition of God's truth comes into us. Doubt, fear, not a part of God's plan. Understanding is. He wants us to understand. Well, we're going to separate now. Men will go up in the upper area there and we'll do